this is how I do it. Hi, <laughs> welcome to this week's vlog. This week I'm gonna show you my workspace. This is where I edit my vlogs and also where if I have a film and TV audition, it happens in this space. In the before times, there used to be, you used to have a, an appointment for an audition at a location, a little studio in town. I'd go there and bang out my audition in one or two takes and there'd be, you know, six to 12 other women in the room who kind of looked similar to me or had a similar essence. And there's a little bit of nerves and excitement. And then the pandemic happened, right? And everything switched to at home. So everyone had to get their own home studio supplies and kind of up their tech game and learn about all the different apps and ways to do things and set up their own home studio. So I'm gonna show you all the supplies I have for being a film and TV actor in Vancouver. I occasionally get parts off on little shows. I'm very lucky that I have Ninjago that can uh, sustain me and keep me in the acting game. And um, film and TV is like an extra little bonus. It's a mess, so let's clean it up and set up the space. Also, I'm in my jammies. beautiful view to look at. Type it type away on my computer. But if I was doing an audition, I'd have to move this table and desk out of the way. Uh, so I guess I gotta do that. set up this backdrop. This is a collapsible backdrop and I'll put the link in the description below if you're looking to set up a home audition studio and you don't know where to start or the simplest things you need. Um, yeah, I'll link the products. Hide that behind here. Here we go. Here's the magic. Don't get whipped in the face. Ah! Um, here it is. And then I just attach it to this back railing. This is Velcro. Yeah. yeah. Um, now I'll set up the camera so you can see. Usually I wear the same lav mic because uh, it gives me good sound. Okay, now I'm going to show you five different costumes I have in my back pocket for different auditions that I get. I'm going to do a little fashion show. This is the character that I audition for most, a nurse or a doctor. So I have a set of scrubs in my repertoire. They have some authentic work stains because my partner got these from work and he is a nurse. And so when I slate, which is when you say, hi, my name is Kelly Metzger, I'm 5'5", five five. I live in Vancouver, I'm Union. I usually uh, hold my hands like this to hide the stain. I frame the shot like this with a little bit of shoulders, a little bit of my shoulders. I kind of stand just slightly off center 
and speak in this direction. The reader is the person who reads the other lines in the scene. And sometimes my partner Phil does it for me. In the before times when we used to go into a room and audition in front of the casting director with the other actors in the waiting room, there was a little bit of nerves that went with your audition. And I think that helped the performance. Now, because everything happens from home, I'm not really nervous and I kind of just work out my audition in front of the camera, where before uh, I would have it all memorized and ready to go so that when I walked into the audition room, I could just bang it out in one or two takes. Now I stand in front of the camera and sometimes I don't even have my lines com completely memorized. I kind of fumble through until I get it. It's just a different process now that everything's at home. So instead of that nervous energy that I had before, sometimes I'm just, frustrated with Phil because I don't like how he's reading or maybe he's given me a note uh, or a direction and I don't like that or you know just in general I'm frustrated with him and so instead of nervous energy I uh, take a little bit of anger you know that middle-aged woman anger and I put it into my auditions and sometimes it works that Space Force audition um, Phil was my reader and he was giving me notes and I was so angry with him <laughs> But I got the part. You can check out my demo if you want to see. That was um, a very exciting day to work with Steve Carell. Unfortunately, Lisa Kudrow, um, we, I, we were just talking to an iPad in that scene and then they filmed her stuff later and put that, they just edited it into it. So I didn't get to meet Lisa Kudrow, but uh, Steve Carell was very nice and I was super nervous. Also, I had given myself a uh, Miley Cyrus pandemic mullet uh, so I looked pretty ridiculous that year, but I think that ridiculous mullet helped me get the part. So, mullets for the win. So this is my nurse uh, uniform. I just wear my slippers because you can't see my feet in the audition. Okay, scrubs. Number one, if you want to be an actor, you should probably get yourself a set of scrubs for auditions. And here comes the next costume. All right, skis. This is my pioneer outfit. If I ever have to audition for something that's set pre-1900s or even early 1900s, this is the costume that I pull out of my wardrobe. Pioneer lady, peasant lady, uptight, servant, core lady in the old days. And uh, these are some like fry boots that are from the 1970s that I got at a clothing swap. I knew these things are like $500. So I think I'm just gonna keep wearing these 50 year old boots. Hmm. All right, hello. Hmm, maybe I am a new immigrant and I just got off the boat. This is my unspecific British accent. Hello, and now for the next one. Now this is the costume that I wished I had more use for. Apparently you're always supposed to have a suit in case you have to audition for some kind of businessy or lawyery type character. I'm not getting those auditions right now. And I got this really nice suit from Aritzia and I went into the store and I told the girl, I'm looking for clothes for, an, for auditions and I'm an actor. And they started acting like I was famous and like getting me all this stuff. And I was having so much fun. Um, being doted on and them treating me like I was famous. I just decided to go with it. And I ended up purchasing way more clothes than I needed to, but it was a very fun day. And I got this really great suit. And I don't know if I've worn it in an audition yet, unfortunately. I love this suit. I've worn it out just at a party a couple times, but uh, I'm auditioning for like nurses and maids and things right now, not lawyers. When am I gonna be grown up enough to audition for a lawyer? When? When am I gonna play a lawyer? I have lawyer friends. I could be a lawyer, right? Right? This is another kind of old fashioned -y costume that I have. This is more of like a quirky librarian, choir teacher costume. This sweater I got from my mother-in-law. Let's take a look at it. It was given to her by her friend who is a master knitter. And like, this is all quilted. And then these beautiful sleeves. Actually, I love this sweater. It's pretty quirky. It's very specific of a character when I put this on. So 
that's why I like to keep it in my repertoire of choices. And got my cute shoes. I like to get specific about my footwear because I find that informs how I stand and my posture. So even though you don't see my shoes in an audition, I put shoes on anyway. I can't snap. So this is the costume I would wear if I was going to audition for a forest service ranger or pest control or animal control or some kind of, or I worked at an airport, some kind of job like that. Pretty basic. Again, I think I like it, it's fun. It's fun to dress up. I love playing dress up. I don't have a lot of everyday clothes, but I have a lot of costumes. And just like that, I'm gonna go from forest ranger to I'm a cleaning lady. Switch the gray to pink and uh, you turn into a Molly maid. And I have booked a part with this shirt. Sometimes it pays to be very specific in your costume. So yeah, thanks for watching this week's vlog. I hope it gave you a little bit of insight on what the process is and your, what your life is like if you're a film actor. If you're interested in getting started in film and TV and auditioning and you don't know where to begin, I'll put some links to the products that I have, this backdrop, um, this ring light, my lav mic, might give you a starting off point. And uh, you got to peer behind the curtain and see what happens. Okay, thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Three braids, you know, not the most beautiful, but totally, I don't know, acceptable. Oh, and if you're interested in pursuing voiceover for animation, I got a link to my Skillshare course below. Try it for a month for free. And uh, bye.